Compliance is a very big university question. It's a very important concept. And if you have noticed, the first chapter of Guyton is laden with concepts. Uh, it's quite skewed the way Guyton has written uh, the respiratory system. Uh, a lot of, at least, obviously he didn't know, a lot of university questions seem to fall in the first chapter. This is one of those crown university questions, compliance. Okay, so what is compliance? Compliance as the English language compliance word means, what does it mean? What does, what does it mean compliance with these orders? It's a very commonly used administrative term. Agree, carry out, just do it, all those sort of things, right? So what do we mean by compliance in context of the lung? Simply put, we know the architecture of the lung now, number one. We know the neighbors of the lung. We know, we, we know the house of the lung, the thoracic cage. So the thoracic cage with the lung in it, this combined, this whole system, it has a, what is its main function, physical function? To be able to distend, expand, then contract, then, but obviously it needs to expand and then it will be contracting, right? So the, so the, the crux of the matter is lung should be able to expand. Compliance is a measure of that distensibility or expansion. Very simply put, we will put, we will, we will add more science to it. But you know, when you want to understand something new, you need to make it ridiculously simple. This is that ridiculously simple version. The, the amount, the extent to which lungs can distend is compliance. So yeah. Now, of, of course, we need to quantify it. So for every, so now I'm putting the science in it. Since it's a quantity and we are precise about medicine, we would like to know. So for example, in a COPD patient, what happens to the compliance as compared to a normal healthy person? This is one example that I'll be, I'll be repeating over and over. Number two, there's a person with pulmonary fibrosis. This is another set of conditions. The difference between COPD group of conditions and this group of conditions, one of which is called pulmonary fibrosis, is that here the lung is stiff. We will, we will learn more about it. So there is a restrictive group of disorders. Then there is an obstructive group of disorders. Under obstructive group, the main famous disease is COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. However, there is, a, there is another family of diseases called restrictive diseases in which you have pulmonary fibrosis and, and similar. Again, ridiculously simple concept coming up. In obstructive disorders, the main issue is with expiration, usually expiration, okay? Which, yani, the primary sin, the original sin, if you want to say that. The original problem is with the expiration, but eventually this messes up the inspiration as well, and I've described that. In restrictive disorders, from the start go, you have both issues. Because the lung is stiff. In fact, this lung would like to expire. It's easier to expire this lung if you think about it. It's a stiff lung. It does not want to expand. It has damaged. So its, it's, elastic, it's, it's elasticity has been damaged. Hence, it will resist expansion. So inhalation will be a problem. Inspiration will be a problem. However, expiration will be very natural to it because it's stiff. Make this concept, please. A stiff lung, high elastic recoil, difficult to expand, relatively easy to contract or get rid of the air. Obstructive disorder, relatively easy to expand, very difficult to expire. This concept should start to make sense now to you. Okay, that's why there is a reason why we start early with these disorders. Guyton has a chapter right at the end of the unit. 
where he starts to very academically describe these disorders. I don't think that works with, with people anymore. People need to, to be told the story alongside the concepts, okay? So these are the two groups of disorders that you'll be dealing with in pulmonology, eventually, or medicine. Obstructive group of disorders, very common, by the way. Restrictive uh, group of disorders, which are common in workers who work in big factories where there's a lot of smoke inhalation or asbestos or fibers or cotton industry. So always look for history. There are cues in the history, uh, very valuable cues that will give you a, a, a big input for your diagnosis. If the guy gives you a history of his, his profession, that is a big thing in pulmonology. That's a huge clue that you need to record. Okay, this is what he, this guy does. Okay, so if he's a traffic sergeant outside, so he's exposed to pollutants all the time. He will have all sorts of issues with his lungs, especially if he does not take care of his, uh, uh, the air that he breathes in. So compliance, now we are getting to the hardcore clinical stuff. The compliance is a quantification of the distensibility of the matter of lung, of the parenchyma. It's a test. How good, how healthy the lung really is. How in sync is the lung with the chest wall? And together, how much can they accommodate air? Every system needs to have an upper limit and a lower limit. So we check, we check the limits of the lung and the chest wall by studying compliance. The measure of distensibility. Although, please remember, distensibility is not a very accurate scientific term when it comes to medicine. Compliances. Okay? Distensibility has slightly different meanings. I can tell you if you ask me, but you won't. I just described that it's a measure of distensibility, but don't use distensibility often because there is an, there is an issue with the word distensibility. It does not take into account the amount of signs that you, we would like uh, uh, the compliance to have. You, you, you'll see what they'll be going through this. Okay. This you need to know very well. What is this? Say it. Static compliance. Guyton does not mention it, but what he describes is in, describes in terms of compliance, that whole uh, topic that he describes, that is actually static compliance. However, there is a dynamic compliance as well. And I, I, I will teach you that briefly though, because you probably will not be asked dynamic compliance in this prof. However, can you imagine looking at a picture half? Can you imagine that? Would you be, would you be okay with that? No, you shouldn't be okay with that. So you're shown the Mona Lisa picture quarter, quarter of the Mona Lisa picture, and you've never seen the Mona Lisa, whatever. You'll say, well, what, what is this? An eye of a person. I don't, I can't even make out it's a male or female, right? So compliance has two components. Right now, your lungs are on dynamic compliance. How can we not study that? He does not mention it in the book for some reason. Static compliance comes into play when the lung collapses and then you expand it. That is where static compliance concepts come in. However, dynamic compliance is right now me and you. Our lungs are following the principles of dynamic compliance. So it's, it's hugely important. Okay, so most of this stuff we've already covered. Okay, this is just for your revision. You know the composition of lung. You should know. We did a whole long lecture on the architecture of lung. Okay, it's also uh, uh, present on the channel. All right, so just, just have a revision of that. I mentioned to you that it's full of elast elastin fibers, collagen, and the nylon stock, the sock example. I think we've, 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 we've done that, we've burned that topic. If you, if you look at it uh, in, in a pictorial form, you can see the way alveoli are connected with each other. So if one alveolus was to contract, it will bring all of its brothers, one, two, three, four, five, and six with them. So that if the central, uh, if a central alveolus were to contract, then it would, 
stretch the surrounding alveoli compensating for its decreased area if you think about it right if if the center alveolus this one here it's contracting its surface area is decreasing isn't it now to compensate for that look at the architecture check out check the architecture out no active process going on it's the way they are connected it will obviously if it contracts it will pull or tug on the surrounding alveoli which it's anatomically connected with expanding those alveoli so there is a, a natural compensation in between theek okay? hai and this actually is a very cool concept if you uh, uh, if you want to just plug that information in in your architecture of the lung wali discussion so this is very nice we have gone to the uh, level of the alveoli and this is what he has said you look at the look at the size of the alveoli they increase by this whole thing and if it were to ex extend uh, dilate then it would put pressure on the surrounding alveoli to compress them a bit so it's a very very beautiful balance between alveoli the way they are structured okay it's not random it's not random it has a certain structure to it okay now again i told you we will be talking about stiff lung so from now on just keep on revising in your mind we are now going after the lung and the disease state of lung we are now happy i am happy that i think we should we have some basic knowledge about what a healthy lung looks like now we are going into the deep waters so stiff lung let's compare that if you compare a healthy with a stiff lung and i've just described compliance the stiff lung would have more compliance or less 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 would it would a stiff thing have the ability to distend as much as a healthy flexible thing no so stiff lungs have less compliance this is an mcq of course we are not nice people and we won't give it straight to you we will weave this in all sorts of complicated scenarios but the bottom line is you will be tested on physiology so the bottom point is that we have to say we have to come to the point where you will be given enough hint in the mcq that okay the pulmonary fibrosis lung is stiff he's asking about compliance and compliance goes down there will be a lot of other data in it to confuse you or to educate you so pulmonary fibrosis the person that comes with pulmonary fibrosis he may throw in some data of this guy he works etc etc he smokes this that his weight is this his blood pressure all of these things some of these are distractors the bottom line that we have to ask you because this is physiology and not medicine is that what is the compliance with the distensibility elastic recoil isse bahar hum nahi ja sakte i'm giving you the secrets of the trade okay so look for the scenario don't be intimidated by the scenario but look at the last statement that has the question in it you will get to the point if you start reading the scenario and getting depressed about it okay ye ye 6 lines ka scenario aa gaya ab to main mar gaya so aap mar hi jaoge uske baad always go for the last sentence look at what is being asked there is clue over there there must be some words that you recognize okay so compliance roughly the sensibility is in in a healthy lung it's there is a benchmark of it we will we'll look at it there are standard values for it but in a stiff lung it goes down okay so pulmonary fibrosis and all the restrictive lung disorders compliance goes down what about obstructive lung disorders now this is the question that is for the ones who study in a while okay so i'm half of mind that i shouldn't explain it let it let it flow let's see who comes up with what do you think kitna to karo na before i give you the sare lag go on what do you think not about life or universe i'm talking about compliance in copd go on say something look alive ji kam hogi and the same me kam hogi fir se एम्फसीमा में कम होगी एम्फसीमा में कम होगी 
बंकाइटिस में नहीं होगी इंक्रीज होगी ओके हाउ मेनी फॉर इंक्रीज यू हैव टू जस्ट रेज योर हैंड हाउ मेनी फॉर डिक्रीज बटे बाकी जो हैं वो किसी वलीमे में आए हुए हैं आई वोट गिव आई विल गिव यू द आंसर आई वोट एक्सप्लेन इट इट I'm conflicted. It's a it's a beautiful explanation. I can't waste it on you guys. Come on. You will forget. You will walk out this room and you'll forget it. It's a beautiful explanation. The static compliance increases. The dynamic compliance goes down the drain. There's a difference. Now, I'm giving you a tip of the wire. If a questioner in a high stakes wire ask you this question in Pakistan, I'm talking about Pakistan here, and the question is in COPD, what happens to compliance? You say compliance is increased. Don't don't, don't invite. If you don't know your stuff deeply, just say increase hoti hai and let's move on. The the, the examiner will be happy and it's he'll hop on to another question. However, if you want to impress. then you bring in these static and dynamic terms with it but then be ready ready for the bull because then he will ask you what is dynamic and what is static compliance you know giving a viva is an art the really clever ones give an answer with a keyword at the end they literally lead on the examiner and it's not a very big rocket science thing it's very very mundane actually if you just uh, rehearse a bit with your friends give answers with certain keywords at the end which you want to which you are good at the examiner it's, it's psychology the examiner will have at least 5 to 6 minutes only for a viva and you know that that he's pushed for time so what you do you play with this whole thing you give a i really hope professors don't watch these videos so you give a keyword at the end 90% chance psychology says is that he will pick the keyword that embedded keyword and he will ask you that question Yoshi, well, okay. Elastins is a word that cer certain books other than Guyton use. Elastins is another word for elastic recoil. Nothing fancy. Elastins, elastic recoil, same thing. Elastic fiber wants to come back to its length, doesn't it? Spring, you release the spring. What does it want really? It wants to be stretched. It wants to come back. Yes. So that is a measure. The measure is called elastins. We just made a adjective for it. That's it. for elastic recoil this thing this thing is new this thing is new work of breathing we will talk about that. we will talk about that. but just just know that we have mentioned this this is a term this is a technical term it has a specific meaning it's not just any work work of breathing is a concept it's actually a very cool concept it takes you down the dynamic wali compliance so be aware that is being now introduced to you and the key thing which work of breathing is defined by is resistance of the airways till now remember the lung that we made in the lab jelly beaker jelly tree miniature all that business what did i tell you about the tree the tree symbolizes airways the airways i'm i'm going to now just give you some information about that from since that point till now we have been discussing the the, the jelly the parenchyma the the stuff that surrounds the airways have we not we have right we have been after elastic fibers collagen fibers the sock this that the other we haven't really mentioned much about the airways themselves are they active Uh, uh structures guess what happens in say asthma the parenchyma is fine in asthma primarily the mess up is the airways themselves so if somebody an asthmatic he or she is particularly sensitive to a certain pollen so asthmatics have a problem in april uh, may may uh, march and april if they have to go to sambad specifically there's a mulberry tree over there which is vicious in these two months bahar 
کے منس ہوتے ہیں اٹ پالینیٹس سو ایزمیٹکس ان اسلام آباد وہ مرنے والے ہوئے ہوتے ہیں سو اف یو ہیپن ٹو ہیو این الرجی فار دیٹ اینڈ ایف دا پالن اینٹ از دا ایئر ویز اینڈ اٹ ڈز وٹ ہیپنس بیکاز یو آر سینسٹیو ہائپر سینسٹیوٹی ریئیکشن یو ہیو ریڈ ان بلڈ فزیولوجی ہائپر سینسٹیوٹی دیر آر مینی ٹائپس آف ہائپر سینسٹیوٹی دس از آلسو ون ٹائپ آف ہائپر سینسٹیوٹی سو دس الرجک ریئیکشن ہیپنس اینڈ گیس وچ پارٹ آف دا ہول لنگ ریئیکٹس ٹو اٹ دا ایئر ویز وٹ ڈو دے ڈو they don't like it they constrict why do they constrict it's a protective mechanism so that whatever injurious thing you are inhaling it stops okay it goes into constriction protective but of course that whole thing becomes makes uh, the person very uncomfortable in breathing how can you breathe uh, when the diameter of the airways have reduced you can imagine the rest inhalation will be a problem expiration will be a problem more problem which will be good will it be inspiration or expiration soch ke batana please it's not a casual question and this go will go to show you how much you understand conceptually all the stuff that we have read about the architecture of the lung so go in slow motion asthmatic person inhaling air inhaling air lung is supposed to in inhalation <laughs> expand or contract expand yes so those constricted airways at least will have a tugging effect on the airways will have some little bit discount but check out exhalation expiration what will happen in expiration pehle se hi they are constricted and now the lung is coming together remember this thing that in obstructive disorders exhalation is designed to put pressure on the airways so if you have an airway problem then it multiplies during expiration not that much in as in, uh, inspiration did you get it so in ex ex expiration he will cough and he will he will really have those symptoms during expiration and by the way inspiration may since you have to pull apart a tissue you use accessory muscles and this and that and you get the job done in some way in expiration what will you do strain the more you strain the more pressure comes on the airways the more collapse they will so there is really no no recipe for expiration inspiration ka hai technique hai you use ex accessory muscles and really pull them apart expiration is the problem you see where this whole story is going most of the issues is in expiration especially in obstructive disorders for this reason this natural reason okay okay so you are working in an er and a person with a gunshot wound comes to you okay you confirm on x ray that one side of the lung has collapsed which ever one side okay the other lung is fine one side is collapsed where the bullet has entered okay are you there are you in the ear what will be the symptoms of this person if he is awake if he is conscious this this respiratory rate will be high because he is trying to compensate for a collapsed lung although the air the 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 volume of air going in and out will be less of course i guess we are stuck in the ear this is compliance don't be worried see this is the difference in compliance and distensibility look at this this is delta by the way i couldn't find a uh, a symbol for it delta delta v over delta p change in volume per unit change in pressure this is compliance in mathematical terms this is why we don't like distensibility distensibility does not have units distensibility is like he was rude to me well how rude rude as in we should sort him out or rude in as in just ignore him <laughs> not quantifiable thing we don't like distensibility is one of those terms compliance compliance has units so it's change in volume per change in pressure this is compliance now we are going deep into compliance okay please remember this this is question stuff this is assessment when you are asked compliance you are supposed to say or write this equation right 
uh, you can see that there is a value for lungs only. Then there's a value for combined lung and thorax. And there's a difference. Anyone would like to explain that? It's logical. No, no big deal here. The compliance of lungs only is more than the combined system. Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you said collapse like three times. Compliance is its ability to distend and accommodate it. So let's concentrate on that. It will collapse in its own time. However, we right now are talking about its distensibility profile. How much can it expand? So if you take the lung out somehow of the rib cage and expand it, it will obviously expand to a certain extent. However, now you put it inside the bony cage, the bony cage which, which will limit its expansion. So the, the actual amount of total expansion is actually 200 ml per centimeter water. Okay. But when you put it in the thoracic cage, it reduces to 110. Remember this, please. This can be a question in whatever format. The compliance of the lung is quite more, significantly more than the combined lung thoracic cage system. It's very, it's a very obvious point. Okay. Any questions? No, there is a question, Bete. If your eyes are working, which I'm sure they are. Ekman, hold on. Can you see this? So you can see. It's not going to. No, this is mine. Anji, so you can see. See the stuff that we've covered. There's a question there for you. You don't observe things. What do they say? You, you look, but you did not see. What is this? What is this? PTP. Why aren't you asking me this question? So with your class, I have to ask you, are there any questions? Then concoct questions, make them up and answer them. It's me, myself, and I. That's not cool. Anyway, what is PTP? Or Maziki Bate, Yako Ate. You say depressing Bate, Yako Ate. John's pulmonary question. Transpulmonary TP, transpulmonary P for. So, this is a convention that they make the main parameter as capital. So, P, it's, it's a pressure. So, the big P, and then the, what do you call this? Subscript is those small letters, is exactly which pressure are we talking about? So, always pressure is written like that. Okay. P, small a, P, capital A. Okay. So, P, capital A is alveolar pressure. Alveolar pressure. P small a pressure of a gas, whatever oxygen carbon dioxide in blood. I don't know why, what's the difference of this capital and who decided that, but this is convention. When you write P capital A, normally it means or P capital A O2. This means oxygen concentration inside the alveoli. When you write P small a o2 partial pressure of oxygen in blood yes please na bolna ye okay ye badi crucial information this is convention you need to understand these conventions but now you will get a question with p capital a and you'll be confused at, at the end in the unit test okay we won't be nice to explain to you the long thing oh by the way these are the alveoli and this is the blood no because it's convention you're supposed to know this p small a blood p capital a alveoli PTP transpulmonary pressure. Now, final definition all options in. It's the change in what don't no need to write it. It's there in the books. You'll be amazed how much wisdom is carried by these books if you just open them. It's the change in volume per unit change in. Not just any pressure, transpulmonary pressure. Can I use some other pressure here? Might as well just eat this candy myself. Can I use instead of transpulmonary pressure? Can I use some other pressure here? 
Candy says, yes, I can. Go on, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Compete for the candy. <laughs> Go on. Can you put in any of the pressures other than transpulmonary pressure that you have read up till now to say the same thing? For compliance. For compliance. You're really naughty, eh? Don't know. Very good. No. Give me a pressure. Dar. Give me a pressure. Alveolar and pleural. Don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's just say a pressure name. No sentence. Nahi bolna. Ji. Ko nikal de aur ek aur pressure dal de aur meaning hoi rahe. Sochho. Aam hi nahi dikha raha candy. Koi baje hai. Ji. Plural pressure. What about you? Plural. Why plural? Bete plural pressure pe bhi to ab solve kar sakte hain compliance. Koi nahi kar sakte. What is transpulmonary pressure? The distensibility pressure that we discussed, we've discussed that, right? Can we say the same equation for plural pressure? Yes, we can. The more negative plural pressure becomes, the more lung will distend. Graph. That was very clever of you, by the way, mister. This graph is of compliance. Uh, we will just stop here after I explain the graph. Uh, and tomorrow, okay. what do you see in this graph? There are two curves in this curve, right? First, you see x and y axis. So he has solved it for plural pressure. You can use it for uh, transpulmonary pressure, whatever. It's just the units that will change. Point is, from that point to this point, we are pulling the lung, pulling it out, and it's distending. And how do we see it's distending? Lung volume. So on the uh, y axis, you have volume. On the x axis, you have a distending pressure, either plural pressure, transparent pressure, irrelevant. Yes? How do we plot this graph? We take the lung, we connect it with a device, an air device. We open the air device one bit at a time. So we open a device, we know how much air has gone in, and we switch it off. Then we look at the lung, how much volume it has increased. Then we repeat, we put in more air, stop. Then we look at the change in volume. So each delta P that we are introducing corresponds to a delta V in the lump. That's how we plot this graph. Which part of it? This part. It's called the inspiratory compliance curve. Inspiratory compliance curve. Yes? We keep on repeating it till the lung is full of air and it cannot extend anymore. And whatever air now that we put in will either go to waste or start damaging the air. So we stop the experiment at this point. Okay, that would represent the highest point where you see slight flattening. It's not a very excellent uh, picture. Graph. Now there is my system. So next level. This is this is an excellent graph. Just just to show you, just look at the tapering end. Look at the tapering end. So he, this is a very proper compliance curve. It goes through its phases, and right till here, whatever you do now, volume won't change because you have come up to the end of the capacity of the lung. Yes. Let's go back to the that is the feature. Sorry. Okay. Why am I sticking to this very rubbish sort of graph? Is because it's in Brighton. And people usually ask you, Acha, you have given nerve and muscle vivas, right? Nerve and muscle vivas? So in nerve and muscle vivas, there is a pet way of the examiners that they put, it gives you a pencil and a paper. Well, hotai. Okay, make the action potential. Right then and there. Nerve action potential banai. Okay? This is one of those questions, by the way. Whether you like it or not. An examiner who really likes respiration may ask you to draw the compliance curve. 
and the way you pick up the pencil look around and make the x and y axis shows us that either you know your stuff or not okay it's a it's huge uq big one big one right then what do we do then we do the reverse either you squeeze the lung one bit at a time or put in a suction device and take volume out but in the same way one bit at a time so you take one unit of air out see how much volume is changed then again and again and again and you come back so this actually there should be arrows on this graph arrows in this direction and arrows back so first the inspiratory curve is made then the expiratory curve is made like this it's not it's not like this it's this then it comes like this an inspiratory curve just like my hand movement is like it's not one beautiful crescent that he's made it's not like this it actually has a wavy pattern slightly sigmoidal roughly s shape s a fir steep fir s a this is the actual co correct inspiratory compliance curve yeah dekh so it goes flat first and of course it has a meaning then it rounds off a bit then it becomes steep then it flattens at the end however if you observe both curves they are very different the inspiratory compliance curve has phases expiratory doesn't have phases so i've just explained to you how do you make the inspiratory compliance curve and how you make the expiratory compliance curve is it okay till now you only thought there is a candy question there are only candy questions however there are also a rare on rare occasions a chocolate question however the chocolate competition is tough how because in chocolate let me show you, let me tell you the positive stuff first i will get you a chocolate within physiological range of your choice that is the incentive i will get you that chocolate however if you get the answer wrong you will get me the chocolate which obviously i will distribute i'm a good guy told you that are you ready for the chocolate question the first chocolate question 2021 first year batch is coming why is there a difference between the inspiratory curve and the expiratory curve you have 40 seconds and no way in hell can you tell me this answer any it will be the auditorium will crack and there will be an, a tremor and the chairman will come in with a garland and give you a medal and something like that. nothing is going to go on 40 seconds you can discuss but the answer is individual Wait. Hold on. No, no, no. Not good. You are in the year. That was not by design. It was a mistake. Genuine mistake. Hmm. One boy. One boy, four girls. Come on. Let's have more. I want. I. I like. I like Kit Kat. I'm smelling Kit Kat. I will have Kit Kat tomorrow. Hmm. Can I start? Just a short and sharp answer, please. एंड in expiration so are you questioning or are you answering you are answering okay you have a very funny tone in answering like aise no acha and what what about expiration expiration is relatively easy because it's kind of a positive force because it's a positive force what's this may the force be with you quote and quote ji bete wahan pe ek bachcha tha ji kit kat kal ek choti si kit kat le aana kya naam hai tumhara Where is the seer? Seer, recover a Kit Kat from him. However, the 
KitKat's wrapper goes to, not the KitKat, the wrapper. She said some magic words initially. You, you just look at the graph. Where is the graph? During the inspiratory compliance curve, obviously something is happening. When it flattens like this, you know mathem enough mathematics that if it's flat like this and you are pumping air in and it's not expanding, what, what is going on? Some, some struggle is going on. Something is being overcome. Nahin? You are increasing distending air. You're pulling it, putting in air, but the, ball, the graph is not going up. It's going flat. Obviously, it's overcoming something. Whatever that may be, the forces, then something happens because it starts to go up right here in the round, round bit. So, whatever pressure you're giving, it is bringing you some volume change. Yes? From here onwards, it really kicks off. Whatever you give in pressure leads to volume change, direct proportion. Yes or no? Straight, Anna? Yes. Mathematics, basic mathematics. And then it flattens. You know, whatever pressure you give cannot change in volume because you have maxed it out, the whole thing. However, the initial, this whole thing from here till the max out bit gives you a story, although it's a graph. But if you were to put your, all the concepts that we've discussed in the first three, four lectures, you should be able to understand that inspiration is different. Which one big force you are going against when you're inspiring the lung? Wrapper is taken back. I will keep the wrapper and eat it. That. Sorry, sorry. I thought about inspiration. Jeez. Surface tension between animals. Surface tension is very good. That's a very good answer. We surface tension. One is surface tension. But what have we done already? The, the recoil. The recoil. The elastic recoil of the lung. We are going against it. Every time you inspire, you go against the elastic recoil. Don't you? That force is resisting. That's why the graph is a bit funny. Okay? But what happens in expiration? You are doing something that the lung likes. The lung likes to recoil and you are exhaling the lung. No problems. It could be one, one smooth drop, one smooth crescent. Inspiration, expiration, because you, you are going with the recoil. Inspiration, you're going against the recoil and the surface tension that you mentioned. Okay. More on this tomorrow. Crucial. Again, these are crucial lectures, but on a very, very serious note. Okay. I, I, I put in bits of fun. So, you know, you take it lightly. However, these are very serious matters. Okay. And they need to be understood in depth. Okay. So please bring your brain with you. Okay. Final words will be deleted on the video. They can please do that.